There are about a million directions we could take a conversation on wedding, reception, and ceremony decorations, but for the sake of keeping it simple, let's keep it simple. Hey there, it's Kara, and the goal of our time here together on the Wedding Planning Podcast is pretty simple. I want you to have all the resources and the confidence to plan the wedding you want, minus the crushing stress, expense, and overwhelm that's felt by so many engaged couples. If you're newly engaged and looking to kick off the new year with a fresh start on your wedding plans, then you'll definitely want to check out my totally free engagement starter kit. I've packaged up a three-part bonus audio series that's designed to unlock the essential keys to a down-to-earth, stress-free, and joyful wedding planning experience. All you need to do for instant access right now is type this address into your web browser. It's allnew.wedding. Enter your name and email address and episode one of the Engagement Starter Kit bonus series will be on the way. That website one more time is allnew.wedding. Enjoy the show. Hello there, and thank you, as always, for meeting me here today for a few minutes to talk all about your wedding. Today is a really, really fun topic, reception and ceremony decor. It's a huge topic, so we have lots to break down. Now, most of us will not be hiring a full-service event designer for the ceremony and reception celebrations. If you are hiring a full service designer, then full permission to press stop on the show right now and forward it along to them. If you're like most of us and you're looking for some easy and affordable ways to dress up your reception and or your ceremony space, then today's bonus workshop is perfect for you. And with that, I hope you'll enjoy today's wedding planning workshop that's full of easy and affordable decoration ideas. There are literally endless directions that we could take a conversation on wedding decor. It is such a big topic. In the spirit of ease and simplicity, two of my favorite words ever, let's sail through three very basic points to keep in mind as you're formulating how you'll decorate your wedding ceremony and or reception space. First and foremost, where do decorations fall on your personal list of priorities. If decor and over the top flowers and centerpieces, if this is not something that's incredibly important to you, or if you have selected a gorgeous venue that needs nothing additional, then full permission to you to skip this section entirely. I will say before we forge ahead that decor can be very simple, it can be very simplistic and still be very beautiful without costing a ton of money. And speaking of money, as you start to imagine some decoration options, you're going to want to keep in mind what is your overall decor budget. This number should include any flowers, draping, custom lighting, table decor, archways, things for the ceremony, things for the reception space, everything should be under this umbrella of a decor budget. Now you may have set aside or formulated a specific flower budget, that's a common thing to budget money aside for. If you have a flower budget that you put aside at the beginning of your engagement, that's just fine. I just want to make sure that at this point, when we're talking about overall decorations, you're including everything together in one lump sum to avoid any budget headaches down the road. So a common mishap, if you will, is that you budget X number of dollars for florals, for centerpieces, bouquets, etc., And then you just kind of forget that you may need to purchase draping or custom lighting or you end up wanting an archway and all of those little extras can add up to be a significant chunk. So just be careful as you're budgeting again to keep all of these items under the umbrella of decor budget. And then as we're aware of that budget and we're going to stay within it of course, uh, the next step as you're formulating decorations is to take inventory. So before you get too carried away on Pinterest or go out and buy anything, 
pause. I know it's an item that is easy to get carried away with and get really, really excited about. I totally, I totally get that. Um, but before you run out and start putting pieces in place, pause and take a detailed inventory of any spaces that you want to add decorations to. And in addition to that, take inventory of specifics, such as how many tables are there, how many posts are there that you want to wrap tool around, how many sets of string lights are you really going to need. If you're hanging paper lanterns from the ceiling, you'll want actual measurements because I know it can seem like an easy thing to guesstimate or you know make a good educated guess on how many you think you'll need, but that number is almost never actually what ends up being the case. So again, as you're putting these things into place, it's very important to have specific measurements, specific inventory of what it is that you're trying to decorate. Now, if you were able to find a naturally, inherently gorgeous venue like we discussed way back in the venue meeting, then a huge congratulations to you because your work here in the decor department may be very minimal. If you're working with more of a blank space for your venue and you want to bring in some extra wow factor, here is a detailed list of things to consider. So first off, it might be helpful to do our wedding vision walkthrough exercise that we did way back in sections one and in section two, there was a repeat of that. Uh, do that exercise specifically with just the decorations in mind. So take note of everything you see and write it down in a big decoration brainstorm just to get your ideas flowing and kind of be able to visualize and start to put into place the vision that you have in your head. Now that's the easy part, imagining a beautiful venue and then writing down all the components of that. The more challenging part is definitely going to be deciding if that vision is realistic given your budget. And that might entail doing some research. Again, you need those measurements to be very specific about actually how much this is going to cost you at the end of the day. And then another question to consider, we touched on this before, but it bears repeating, how large is the actual reception and or ceremony space that you are trying to decorate? Specific measurements, specific inventory. And that includes exactly how many tables do you need centerpiece decorations for? Think about not only the guest tables that your guests will actually be seated at for a meal, but also the side tables. So you may have a gift table, a dessert table, a place card table, a table with your guest book on it, a table honoring loved ones who have passed. You may, I'll say here, you might not have any of those and that's totally fine. I'm just trying to highlight some of the things that can be forgotten until the end and again when these little things here and there all of them kind of creep up at the end and you haven't pre-planned for them it can become kind of overwhelming and it can become a significant budget chunk so just being proactive there and then as you're thinking about your decorations something to consider is can you repurpose decorations so for example can you transport flower arrangements or centerpieces from your ceremony to your reception so that they're doing double duty. And with that point, do be aware that oftentimes your florist will offer that as an option, but there will likely be a transportation fee to do that switching. So just keep that one very kind of obscure line item in mind as you're budgeting. And this, my friend, is the perfect time to drop one of my all-time favorite wedding planning mantras, which is keep it simple. At the end of the day, your guests will not know the difference if you skip a few things here and there. Above all else, please take this to heart. A meaningful wedding is what we're going for, and a meaningful wedding does not have to cost a ton of money. And then some additional points regarding your decor. I like to keep in mind the saying, reduce, reuse, and recycle. And the good old recycling mantra applies perfectly to your wedding decorations. Here's how. 
So by reducing the amount of extra decorations, you're going to keep things simple and affordable. Will your guests miss a few extra floral arrangements, a personalized dance floor, expensive custom lighting dangling from the ceilings? Probably not. And I doubt that you'll regret saving hundreds or even thousands of dollars by skipping it altogether. Meet The Financial Gym, a nationwide female-led personal financial services company with a fitness-inspired approach. Certified financial trainers work with clients one-on-one to teach financial literacy, how to be accountable for your money, and how to make smarter, more strategic decisions about your finances. Our friends at The Financial Gym understand that talking about money can be tough, but rest assured, they've seen it all. Your trainer will coach you on how to overcome your biggest hurdles with confidence, and they are so confident in your success with their trainers that they even offer a limited six-month money-back guarantee. 90% of their clients achieve their financial goals within a year, meaning that you could meet your goal even before your wedding day. Go to financialgym.com slash wedding for more info and use code wedding to get 20% off your first year of membership. That's financialgym.com slash wedding to get 20% off your first year of membership with promo code wedding. Susan's Travel Services is so excited to partner with you to plan your honeymoon, destination wedding, or maybe even your bachelor or bachelorette party. Travel and new experiences are incredibly special to me personally, and earlier this year, Susan helped me plan an unforgettable bachelorette party for my sister Kate and five of our best friends. Her team meticulously researched the best all-inclusive options for us based on some very specific priorities, and we ended up at a luxurious resort in Los Cabos, Mexico, and needless to say, we had the time of our lives. Best of all, Susan has been in the business for 27 years, and let me tell you, she walks the walk. She personally travels to all of her recommended destinations all the time, so she has firsthand on-the-ground experience with all of the amazing resorts, excursions, and services that she recommends. From all-inclusive resorts in Mexico and the Caribbean, to overwater bungalows in the Maldives, or that African safari you've always dreamed of, save yourself hours of research and guesswork and let Susan and her team find you the best deals on this once-in-a-lifetime vacation. Reach out to Susan and her team today by emailing info at susanstravelservices.com and be sure to let her know that I sent you for $50 off your final booking or $100 off your destination wedding. That email again is info at susanstravelservices.com. And then we come to reusing. Reusing decoration items from another couple is an amazing way to keep things really affordable and not to mention earth friendly, which is always something to love. There's no need to go out and buy brand new decorations when there's a huge market of pre-used wedding items that you can take full advantage of. Search for wedding items on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, eBay, Or if you pop open an internet browser and do a search for wedding resale, you'll come up with hundreds of marketplaces that sell secondhand wedding items. And I will say they are secondhand, but these things have been used once. They are essentially in brand new condition. And do keep in mind if you're going this route that for large items, you'll want to keep it local so that you can do pickups versus paying really, really high shipping prices. I would recommend sticking to Craigslist and Facebook just to do local pickups in your area. And hey, if you have to get in the car and drive 20 miles, but that ends up saving you $1,000, that is totally worth it. And then last on that little sub list of things is recycle. Recycle your own wedding decorations by doing exactly what we just talked about and sell them to another couple. The same tips apply from our section 
ju that we just went over for listing your items for sale. And the bonus of this, I can't say enough good things about this tactic. The bonus is twofold because you saved a ton of money by buying it used from another couple and now you're getting some or maybe even all of that investment back by reselling it to another couple. And then of course, same goes if you purchased it brand new, you can still turn around and share it with another couple and recoup some of that investment. So again, Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace are perfect places to list your gently used items for sale to another couple who's engaged in planning their wedding. And I'll say here, this is not flea market flip where we're trying to make money on things. Uh, I would suggest pricing your items fairly with a very clear comparison showing what they would cost brand new and you'll be amazed by how quickly you can offload your stock of wedding decorations. And I'll share here a personal story because I have some hands-on experience with this tactic. Uh, we use this trick with our wedding tablecloths fondue pots, silverware, and centerpiece vases. So if you'll remember to our previous meeting, I shared my DIY catering story from our wedding. Well, we had 35 fondue pots, along with about 20 tablecloths, and a bunch of really simple glass vases that we originally purchased from a local wholesale flower warehouse, and then we purchased silverware. Now you might be asking yourself, why on earth would you purchase tablecloths and silverware? And we did that because it was literally cheaper to buy it than it was to rent it. And that sounds unbelievable, but it's true. So we resold all of those items to other couples. And I believe a church actually bought the tablecloths to use at future events. So it went to a really, really good, good place. And we didn't recoup all of the money that we initially put into those items, but we were probably in the ballpark of 80% or so of what we originally spent. And then to bring this all to life, I'm gonna share some actual numbers. So 35 fondue pots at $40 each, that was $1,400 that we spent. 20 tablecloths that were $20 each, that was $400. 40 vases times $5, that's $200. And then we purchased 80 sets of silverware, so fork, spoon, knife, that was $230. So we spent in total $2,230 on all of those items. And after we resold them to other couples and that church I mentioned, we ended up recovering about $1,700 back. Assuming you don't personally need 35 fondue pots or 80 sets of silverware, that's a really meaningful amount of money for very minimal effort. And then to wrap this meeting up, I have a final word on decorations. I do not personally think that you need a ton of extra decor for your ceremony space. The focus during your ceremony is entirely on you and your partner. So if you're torn between decorating one space over another, I would always suggest allocating your budget to your reception space, which is where your guests are going to spend much more time. So to put that another way, let's say your decor budget overall is $2,000. Rather than putting $1,000 towards the ceremony and $1,000 towards the reception, I would put all $2,000 towards the reception and just keep the ceremony very, very simple and streamlined and clean. The budget is going to make much more of an impact in your reception space than it would in the ceremony site, so go ahead and allocate it all into the reception. Like I said when we started this meeting, there are a million different directions that we could take this conversation, so this kept it brief and general. However, there are much deeper, much more specific conversations to be had about practical wedding reception and ceremony decor, flowers, do-it-yourself projects and tips, money-saving tips with decorations, and so much more. 
With an all new year ahead of us, I can't think of a better time to get a fresh start and completely clear perspective on your wedding day plans. That's why I've packaged up a three part bonus audio series that's designed to unlock the essential keys to a down to earth, stress free and joyful wedding planning experience. For instant access to the Wedding Planning Podcast Engagement Starter Kit, simply head to allnew.wedding. Enter your name and email address and episode one of the Engagement Starter Kit bonus series will be on the way. That website again is allnew.wedding. I can't wait to talk soon.